Hello, welcome to Shraf's uh, technical series. In this video, I'm going to show Shraf's um, Redis connection, how the Redis connection is used to process uh, information. In Shraf's, the front end is based on Node.js and the back end is based on uh, CPP, C++. So, so C++ does the analytical work and then passes the message to the backend node, Node.js based uh, middleware and the Node.js will pass the message back to the client on the web sockets. The backend CPP and node, backend node are Redis streams. Redis streams are a methodology through which you can span out the messages. So multiple consumers can listen to the backend CPP and process the message and each consumer will send a response to backend node stream and you can have multiple uh, backend node processes listening to the messages so it's m m number of instances of backend node map to m number of instances to cpp so in this demo i'm going to add a new entry to the backend cpp the program is running So this is a test message format I'm using for this demo, but this uh, message format can be changed whichever way you would like. So I save it. And the backend node, today is Jan 14th. So you see the message has been sent back by the CPP program to the backend node. We put a message in the CPP stream and it has been processed and sent back by the backend node. So the response code each field is uh, tagged with uh, the thread ID which processes the message. So this is the demo. So I'll walk you through the code. So we have the main process. The main process uses boost ASIO service, asynchronous IO service. So we declare the IO service instance. Then we add an empty work to the IO service. So the IO service stays put, it doesn't exit. If you don't give an empty work and when you do IO service dot run, it will exit immediately because there's no work. And then we create a global lock and display the thread ID. So the program is already running. So if you see here, we created, this is the starting thread. This is what it has printed. So you have one thread, which is the main thread serving the IO service. Then we create the Redis instance. And then we create a Redis instance map, Redis instance um, connection pointers, which is a map of uh, shared uh, pointers. So the idea is we are planning to create multiple threads in this program and each thread will have its own connection. So in the map, we will hold the thread ID and the connection instance. Redis connection is not thread safe, so we have to manage this connection pool. Then we create the Redis stream key IDs. So in the demo I showed you, we have two Redis streams, back in CPP, back in node. Then we create the threads. So this is configurable number of threads you can have. So in this case, we have two threads and the threads are created here. I'll go through this method later. So the threads, once the threads are started, we bind this uh, method to the thread when we create it, and then we pass the IO service and the connection pointers map we created here, which is a shared pointer. And then we start the Redis consumer, which takes the IO service, the Redis pointer, it's a Redis connection we created here, single Redis connection, and the Redis connection map, and then we wait for all the threads to join here. So once you control C or give a signal that we will wait for the threads to join. This program doesn't have a, a signal handler. We will add that in a subsequent video. So in the Redis consumer, we have the keys again. So those two keys I showed you in the Redis insight uh, UI. So we, we, so we create a vector vector of uh, key value pairs. So we have, uh, like I showed you, we, I was sending F1, B1, 
so that's the key this can be changed to json or anything it doesn't matter it's just in this sample we have a vector with key value pairs as the message then we will first try to create a redis group in this case the the c++, c++ program will publish on the backend cpp group so we are trying to create this redis stream if it is there it's fine if it is not then the program will create it backend node was created by the node.js application which i'm not showing in this demo so node.js will create that stream and starts pushing messages on node.js backend cpp will create this stream and it will read messages from node.js process them in cpp so in cpp is much uh, performant and then publish the message back on node uh, backend node so that's how the message exchange happens between the node.js and cpp then we create the group if it is already created it will exit uh, it will just print a message that the group already exists so if you see here it says cannot create the group the group already exits exists because i created the group uh, already i i ran this program multiple times then we'll create a, a an order an ordered pair to capture the key value pairs i was sending here for example if you see here uh, if you see here in the beginning of the video i was sending key value pairs so f1 v1 add f2 v2 Save. So this is my key value pair, and this key value pair will be saved in this uh, in in this result object. So that's that's what it's doing. Then we start the while loop. So this is where the IO service main thread will be blocked. So if you see here, IO service has its own thread. So if I hadn't created these extra threads, it would have been a single threaded program. But I just wanted to be more performant, so I created multiple threads. So now the main thread will block in this loop and it will keep listening to the Redis messages. And once the Redis messages are received, any message is received. In this case, I was publishing messages from here. It will be sent to the process message. Boost.bind will uh, bind the variables. The boost.bind will bind the parameters to this process message function. And then post will post a function onto the io service so that io service would know that there is a function it has to execute so now let's go to the post message function the post message function will post a message on the response stream which is the backend node so the c++ program is going to send the response to the node.js uh, application and then we create a vector to hold the message then we get the thread id of this thread so we posted a message io service will pick a message will pick a thread from its uh, pool of threads we created in the main function picks a thread then that thread will get its own connection from the connection pointers and then it will send the response exact so it will send the response the star implies that uh, we are leaving it to the redis to create a unique id for this for that message each message in the stream has its own unique id we'll discuss that in a separate video so the response sent on to node with id response id so that's what i was printing here so i got uh, v1 v2 first message it was add response was sent by the by this thread and then i got i sent another message response was sent by another thread another thread i have three threads working here so what i've observed is the io service is scheduling the work in a round round robin fashion so each thread gets a message in a loop again if you see here the thread id continues so it was 34 34c 34c that is process message so the message is sent back to the node js now initialize worker this is the function which was called when the thread was initializing i didn't uh, cover that when i was covering the main function if you see here uh, in the initialize we create a global block so that we can update the shared uh, memory area which is uh, the connection pool 
So we create a new Redis instance and add it to the pool. So we use the key as the thread ID and we provide the shade pointer to the Redis connection. And then we started the IO run. IO run will start the IO service. And uh, if you hadn't added that wait in the main function, which I discussed, at, which is the second line in the main function, when you run this, IO service dot run, it would immediately exit. So that's why we have to add a uh, empty work to the IO service to keep it busy until we start the real work, which is the for loop, for loop in the process message function. And then we unlock the lock. This is the Redis connection options um, uh, method which just returns the Redis connection options. Reads these from the environment variables and send them to the uh, calling function so that Redis connection can be opened. So that's about the IO service in this. So that's about the boost IO service and Redis uh, uh, connection uh, data streams. In a subsequent videos, we will make enhancements to this program. So uh, I have listed some to-dos here. So I'm going to implement those to-dos and create more videos. Thank you for watching.